This is the EVGA GTX 980 Ti. You know, basically Nvidia's best gaming card next to the Titan X. Like any other Ti graphics card, you know, it's going to be amazing. Buy it and go live your life. Or don't. The old 780 Ti? That's dead and gone. Or you can do whatever you like. And for those of you who don't get the intro, maybe you ain't urban enough. It's always exciting when a TI level video card comes out. When the 780 Ti came out, it was an even better gaming card than its bigger brother, the Titan. We can't ignore the fact that the Titan, the original Titan, made an amazing workstation card, but today we're looking at this from a purely gaming and light workload standpoint. No double floating point operations for us. Since the Titan X has been restructured as a gaming oriented card now, that places the 980 Ti in an interesting position. It obviously can't beat the Titan X, but it needs to offer enough performance over the regular 980 to be competitive. Luckily for us, Nvidia did not disappoint. First off, the specs. 2816 CUDA cores, a base clock of 1000 MHz, a boost clock of 1075 MHz, a memory clock of 3505 MHz, and 6GB of VRAM. It slots perfectly in between the GTX 980 and the Titan X. The GTX 980 Ti uses the GM200 architecture, 384-bit memory interface, and a 250W TDP, so think of it as a stripped down Titan X instead of an upgraded GTX 980. The most important aspect of this card is the updated Maxwell architecture. It has built in support for the DirectX 12 API, which means less CPU overhead and more efficient graphics processing. Also, the old Kepler based cards only had one DisplayPort output, which was a shame for anyone looking to take advantage of multiple G Sync or high refresh rate monitors. With the 980 Ti, it's now updated with three DisplayPort, one HDMI port and one DVI port. The cooler is the same as before, we're not complaining since it's still a pretty sexy aluminum shroud, but I would be lying if I said I didn't want to see something new. Finally, a more efficient design means less noise, less heat, and higher performance. When idle, our card sits at a clock speed of just 135 MHz and idles at 29 degrees in a room that's about 24 degrees. Under load, we hit a max of just 54 degrees. There's a lot of overhead for overclocking, but more on that later. Let's see how this card does in games. For anyone interested in 1080p, well, you don't actually need this card. It's overkill. Your average frame rate will be in the triple digits, usually even faster than your high refresh rate monitor. Save yourself some money and get a lower end card. This card is designed for 1440p, ultra wide and 4K resolution monitors, especially high refresh rate ones. So that's where we'll start. We don't have an ultra wide monitor on hand at the moment, but you can expect its performance to be smack dab in the middle of 1440p and 4K. Our test system has an Intel i7-5820K, an ASUS X99 Deluxe motherboard, and 16 gigs of HyperX DDR4 memory. Every test was done on the highest preset available with anti-aliasing off, since our pixel density is high enough that stuff looks nice and sharp already. Finally, we're using pre-release GeForce 352.90 drivers, so you can expect even better performance as they're optimized in the future. At 1440p, the 980 Ti will easily play any game you want. The presets are perfect for 60Hz monitors, but if you're using a 1440Hz monitor, you'll need to tweak your settings or use GeForce Game Optimizer. If you drop your settings down to a mixture of ultra and very high, you'll generally be able to average around 80fps or more, with games still looking great. At 4K, you start to see some of the shortcomings of the 980 Ti. Even though we're looking at 6 gigs of VRAM and 90% of the processing power of the Titan X, we're still not quite there for smooth high detail 4K gameplay. It's not too surprising since we determined in our Titan X review that even it was just barely enough for gameplay above 30 FPS. If 4K is your ultimate goal, you're better off with SLI 970s, 980s, or an AMD 295X2. Now what about overclocking? We didn't have enough time to run through our benchmarks again, so we settled for using Firestrike Ultra as a relative comparison. With stock clock speeds, we got a score of 3993, not bad. On stock voltage, Anthony managed to hit a maximum clock speed of 1427 MHz, bringing our score up to 4764. Just imagine the results you'll get with water cooling, increasing voltage, and beefed up cards like the EVGA Classified series.
That about sums it up. The 980 Ti ranks second to the Titan X, but it offers a lot more value when you look at price to performance. For most people out there, it's a good alternative to SLR 970s as well, since we always recommend buying the most powerful single card you can afford. It's just overall much easier to set up and less prone to micro stuttering. Thanks for watching our review of the GTX 980 Ti. If you enjoyed the video, leave a like and subscribe for more content like this from NCIX. And remember, if you do subscribe, you can comment on any video from this month and win a prize with our Fans with Benefits contest. Don't know what that is? Click here to find out more. But we will definitely see you later.